Hello everyone and welcome uh, to a slightly different video um, from what you're used to on this channel because I'm speaking and the reason I'm speaking is that I don't think I can fully explain this model just using text at the bottom of the screen because it's a little bit too complicated. Um, this is a automatic locking differential mechanism that I built. Um, for the purposes of this video I'm going to assume that you know how a differential works and you know why you would want to lock one. If you don't, I'm going to link to my video on that and to Engineering Explains more detailed video on that as well. But this is a locking differential um, and an automatic one at that, so that means that it detects wheel spin and if there's too much wheel spin it will lock the differential. Now I don't have sensors, there's nothing electronic here. I could make a much more complicated version if I had some Mindstorms components, but I don't. Um, and I think it's an interesting exercise to see if I can make it purely mechanical. So the way that it detects wheel spin um, is by looking at the difference in speed of the two shafts. Um, so let's begin. So you might see that there's two differentials here. There's one here and one here. Um, the actual differential that we're locking is this one down here. This is the effective driving differential for the vehicle. You can see up here, this is our input shaft from the engine. This is our differential. This is our locker down here that will slide into that. And these are our output shafts either to the front wheels and rear or to the um, right and left wheels. Okay, so the core of this mechanism and the part that I'm particularly proud of is how it detects the slippage, how it um, looks at difference in speed between the two spinning um, half shafts. Okay, so I'm going to spin these at, I'm going to try to do this at the same speed to represent represent driving in a straight line, them going in uh, at the same speed. So as you can see, when I spin both half shafts in the same direction at the same speed, this axle up here and this axle up here will be spinning in opposite directions. That's because you can see there are three gears here, which means that this will be spinning at the same, sorry, uh, this will be spinning in the same direction as this one, whereas on this side there are only two gears, which means the spin is reversed. That's kind of the secret to this whole thing because, as you can see, in this differential right here, when both are spinning at the same speed in the same direction, mimicking a car going in the straight line, then the power is transferred through this series of bevel gears and the outer gear of the differential is completely unaffected. However, watch this. This is what happens when I spin this one faster, let's say. Do you see what happened there? Okay, let's do that again. It's a little bit sticky to disengage. Okay, so what happened there was, these were spinning, but not at the same speed. I was holding this one in place, I was spinning this. This is the sort of scenario that you would get into um, when, when it would be slipping, right? So this is when you would need to lock it. Okay, so this one's spinning, and now what you can see is, instead of transferring it straight through and not affecting this outer gear, now the outer gear is being spun as well. And when the outer we uh, sorry, when the outer gear is being spun, it affects this relatively simple mechanism, a couple of gears, which transfers this arm to move. And when that arm moves, it places the diff in there, and now look. Now, no matter what I do, these are locked. So I think that's quite an interesting mechanism. Um, I don't think it's particularly practical to be used in um, a, a trial truck or any, any sort of um, remote control model because it's a little bit um, too large, it's very complicated, not very efficient. Um, what else can I say? I'm really making this sound like it's a terrible model. It's not. Um, it's, it's an interesting exercise. I hope it inspired you. Um, but I don't think it would be good as a practical model. Um, thanks for watching.